And this is how just desperate and pathetic my, my addiction was that I sat there like knowingly scraping up this tainted like blood cocaine. And uh, I just, I sat there and snorted it. I think you had your first drink at 12, uh, you started? Uh, no, I didn't have my first drink. I had my first drink before 12, and I'm guessing that uh, it was my parents who gave it to me. I mean, my mom was, of course, uh, an alcoholic, and, and along with that is, uh, you know, sort of hypersensitivity and, you know, overly concerned with the opinions of others. And when I was a baby, mom was like... Uh, not comfortable with me crying on an airplane. You know, she didn't want to be like that you know, with the loud baby on the airplane. And uh, so she would give me booze. <laughs> Are you serious? I think so, yeah. Like when I was like pretty young, like, I mean, we could check with, uh, with my dad or my sister, but uh, I don't think anybody ever disputed that. I mean, not a lot of booze, but just a little bit, just, you know, a little bit of booze. <laughs> to what? To, <laughs> to, make, to make me not cry okay. <laughs> on the plane. But uh, then I think before I was 12, um, it was uh, like a family tradition kind of a thing that on New Year's, the kids could have one alcoholic beverage. And um, I think I remember having alcohol on New Year's Eve when I was like eight or nine. You know, I would have like a beer or something, <laughs> you know. I think the idea was if you, if you let the kids have that, it's not like... I mean, whatever they were going to do, it was going to blow up in their faces. So mm -hmm. I don't fault anybody for anything they did in uh, trying to manage me as a child. Name all the drugs you can remember doing over the years. Uh, my favorites were ketamine, cocaine, nitrous oxide, PCP, um, of course, marijuana, alcohol. Oh, I loved Xanax so much. And Valium, um, never uh, got too into meth, but I never turned it down. Um, had some pretty terrible experiences on magic mushrooms, um, but I had a lot of great experience on, on LSD. And uh, like random weird stuff, I, I huffed video head cleaner there was like this, a weird like episode where I was drinking like aluminum cleaner, <laughs> some weird thing, and like, and that would uh, you know bring about some some pretty uh, disturbing incidents. Tell about uh, going to your HIV positive drug dealer's house when he didn't answer his phone. I had this drug dealer, he lived very close by. I had him in my phone as his first name and then everything, like as a, a pseudo last name. He says, I got everything. And uh, so I would go over to everything's house um, if he didn't answer my call. I would just be like, well, he lives close, and so if he doesn't pick up, I'll just go over there and show up. Sometimes I would show up and uh, you know, he'd be there and you know, sell me my drugs. And uh, sometimes I would show up and um, the door would be locked and it'd be like, you know. And then there were some times where I'd show up and the door would be unlocked, but he would be like passed out because he was very much a, a drug user as well as a, a dealer. And he would inject cocaine, which like for some reason means that with his syringe, he squirted his blood all over. You could see blood squirted over the walls, even on the ceiling. I guess there's just some component to injecting cocaine that uh, like leads you to squirt your own blood all over the place. But this one time when I showed up and uh, he was in his bedroom, passed out, he wasn't dead, but there was, I couldn't wake him up. And I was like, hey, wake up, wake up. And it just, I just finally reached a point where I came to stop trying to wake him up, but I'm in his house. And over at the table where he would weigh out all of his drugs, there was a, you know, a very noticeable residue of cocaine that, you know, just from the volume of cocaine that had been over through this table, it was just there was a residue of it. And so I went over to the table uh, to scrape up a pile of cocaine to snort it. But as I had sat down looking at it, there was, of course, blood has had been squirted like there were like you could see like the little tiny little 
blood, like blood splatter, you know, on the, the residue. And this is how just desperate and pathetic my, my addiction was that I sat there like knowingly scraping up this tainted, like blood cocaine. And, uh, I just, I sat there and snorted it, you know, which is so up. I snorted the blood of an intravenous drug user. Um, I can't <laughs> like that's the extent. <laughs> what was your reaction when you found out he was HIV positive? I, at that point, I had already been through, uh, you know, I'd had the HIV test so many times over and over, and it's like all these years later, and uh, I just don't have it. Like fortunately, that uh, when blood dries or when it's you know, the AIDS doesn't live for very long.